Alright guys, what's going on? This is for the um, Facebook's YouTube board gaming painting collaboration video. Um, volunteered to, to do one of these videos. Um, I really didn't have any painting projects. Um, I had one that I thought I was going to to get from somebody because um, I haven't done any painting in a long time. Um, but it kind of fell through. So I got to thinking about, you know, what could I actually do? And um, I started thinking about some of the, the emails I've gotten, um, the things that I'd seen, you know, at the, the gaming store over the years, and, and they had painting days and stuff like that. And um, something I've noticed is a lot of times the fundamentals, the things that we learned when we first started, over the years, you kind of get away from it, and um, sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes that's a bad thing. Sometimes being refreshed on the fundamentals is um, a good place to start. So I thought, you know, maybe that's a place to go, is um, there's just some refreshers, um, and for people who are just starting out, you know, maybe you haven't heard all of this. Um, you know, we've got so much information out there um, that we didn't have like when I started doing this hobby. Um, you know, you could go to the hobby shop and, you know, ask old timers, but, you know, that was about it. And every now and then you'd find a book. Um, but there's, there's so much stuff now that we didn't have then. And I still like going over some of that stuff. Um, um, Forge World, they have a um, book on painting, a like master class or something. I've been trying to find this book forever. Um, so I want to see what's in it. Um, you know, being reminded of some of the fundamentals is like, always a bad thing. And sometimes there's a new take on it. So, and this is one of the things right here that, um, that amazes me. Um, some people don't take care of them. I mean, some people <sighs> abuse it. Some people buy a, a piece of junk and think it's going to work like, you know, uh, fine wine. And, you know, a lot of times there's not enough respect for the brush. Um, and maybe this isn't Maybe I'm wording it wrong. Um, I think a lot of times it gets taken for granted, maybe. Um, you know, I've seen, and I've been guilty of this myself, abusing the brush. Um, and then wondering why it's not performing like it should. Um, you know, with this hobby, as expensive as it is, you know, you got the models and the, the paints aren't cheap. Although you can buy cheap paint, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But, um, you know, everybody will spend so much money on everything but this. They'll buy a cheapo and then wonder why they're not getting good results. Now, just because you buy a good brush doesn't mean you're going to get good results. But, just like with anything else, the right tool for the right job. Um, and some brushes are shaped for certain things. Um, and yes, you can take one brush and make it do everything, but just like with everything else, the right tool for the right job. Uh huh. And there's articles on this, you know. You get your chisels, brushes, and you, know, you got dry brushes. And not every brush is meant for everything. And then, yes, you can force your way through, but if you use the right tool for the right job, it'll go a lot easier. Um, but at the same time, you got to have respect for it. You don't clean it out properly and you come back and try to use it and you wonder why it doesn't work as good as that first time. Well, you didn't take care of it. Um, say the handle. Say this is the bristles. You, know, you don't need more than about this much of it for paint. But I'll see people take it all the way up to the metal collar. Well, what ends up happening is paint gets up into this metal collar, underneath the metal collar, and then it dries, and then it pushes, it expands when it dries, 
and your bristles no longer keep a nice shape to it. Um, you know, you can't expect it to because you've done abused it. Um, like I said, you know, you don't have to have paint all the way up here. Um, you know, keep it down on the lower third and you get just as good results. Um, I've seen people, they will, um, you know, I have paint up about that far and they keep working it and working it and working it. Well, some of this paint dries. Um, you know, you need to, to clean it out more than just when you're changing colors. You know, if you're using, you got a whole army and you're sitting there doing base coating, you know, the stuff's going to dry. And then you go to clean it out later and you can't get it all cleaned out. You know, there's paint halfway up dried on there. And it does the same thing as underneath the barrels. It will, you know, make it not hold a nice, good, proper point. Um, so, as you're going through, every so often clean it out. Um, your water, for your clean out. Um, you know, I'm just as guilty of this as anybody else. You know, they'll, um, I used to keep just one for metallics and one for colors. And which is which is great. That's great. Now, how many of us have just had one cup and we'll put metallics in there, rinse it out, and then we'll go with the colors and a little bit of metallic gets in there and you get it over painting later on. Um, we don't change our water frequent enough. Um, you know, there's been times where I've had four or five things of water sitting there. And, um, you know, once the, the water gets dirty, it gets relegated down to the next one. And, you know, every so often I'll dump the water out, pour fresh water in. You know, I used to keep a pitcher, um, or some sort of container of water. That way, when the water got too dirty, rinse it out. You know, you sitting there cleaning out dark colors, and you go some light colors, and then you try rinsing it out, well, you're going to get that dark color up in there. Um, you know, it's basic stuff like that. Um, you know, I keep multiple colors or multiple cups up there. This is for, you know, my dirty water. This is for, you know, my darker colors. This is for my medium colors. This is for my light colors. This is for my, you know, no, you don't have to do that. But if you do, you'll get better results. When the water starts to get dirty, change it. I mean, now I've heard, you know, or read articles where they say to use distilled water to clean your brushes out. And, you know, that may be true. You can get just as good results off of tap water. Now, if you're using tap water, there's no reason that you shouldn't keep dumping that water out and put clean water in. Um, you know, little things like that that we overlook could drastically change the quality of your painting. I mean, you know, you've got a bunch of dark colors and you try to do a light colors, some of that gets stuck up in there. Um, another thing that I would do is I would keep, um, you know, a couple different paper towels there. And I kept one for at the end, I would take my brush and I would spin it as I was drawing across. Now I wouldn't like hold on to it and spin it, but I would put it on there and I'd put a nice point back onto it. You know, some people are, you know, to put the point on. A lot of us do it. Um, but after I would clean it, I'd have, you know, a thing of just plain water and I would go through that. You know, after you think it's cleaned out, hit it again. You'd be surprised. Sometimes you didn't get it as clean as you thought it was. But I'd put it in the plain, clean water. And then I would draw it across. And as I was pulling it, I would twist. And I would put that nice edge on it. Um, another thing that I've seen people do is the little ferrule that comes, the little plastic tube that comes when you first buy a brush. You know? they try putting that back on it so that the point stays nice. Good idea in theory, but a lot of times as you're putting it on, you catch one or two bristles and you wouldn't see it and you push it on and now these bristles are down. And now you're having to cut those pieces off. Um, 
brush just doesn't work like it used to. Um, unless you're traveling, I don't see the need to try to put that piece back on. Um, if you are, try to put one from a bigger brush on so you're not the likelihood of bending one of those bristles back isn't as far. Um, but unless you're traveling, I don't really see the need for it. Um, you know, store your brushes upright. Um, don't have a ton of them in there to where you know as you're putting them away, you're gonna bend it, um, and it should be fine. Um, how you take care of your brush, you know, it does have a good impact. Now, you know, I mentioned earlier buying a cheap brush and expecting to get the results of an expensive one. Um, yes you may be able to get good results out of a cheap brush. Um, I was always under the impression that you know, cheap brushes have their place. Um, but I would buy good brushes because, I mean, it's just like with anything else, any tool, buy good quality and get good quality out of it. Now, it would get relegated down, though. You know, as the brush wore, you know, eventually that good brush would become a dry brush um, because, you know, it just wore, it, it used its life. It used its life up. Um, and then I would turn it into, a, like, a dry brush, and, you know, eventually that gets all roughed up, so now it gets relegated into, like, a mixing brush or whatever. Um, My point is, look, go out and do a little research on your brushes, and you'd be amazed at the different brushes there are. Look it up. Spend a little time. You know, we'll read articles on everything but brushes. Um, and brushes have a good impact. Um, certain ones, uh, you know, there's, there's different kinds. There's low hair or sable. Um, you know, like fake sable. And there's this. There's that. There's this. There's that. Some brushes, the material is good for some things, not good for others. Um, look it up. I used to go to Hobby Lobby, and um, a lot of times they'll put some of their really good brushes on sale. And they'll be just as cheap as you know, some of the others. And when they're on sale like that, I grab this few up. Um, you know, put them away. Eventually, I break into them. Um, I have been guilty of having too many brushes, I think, you know, and then can't remember which ones are which. Um, there for a while, I had, you know, yeah, I need this brush, this brush, and this brush. That's all I would leave out. I have multiples put up, you know, I was waiting for them to get used, relegated down, and then break out new ones. Um, you know, and that's all up to you how much you want to spend, but it just amazes me we'll spend so much money on everything but this, or we won't take care of it. Um, it's something, if you put, um, do a little research and put a little effort into it, you'd be amazed at the results you get. Um, I was talking to somebody recently about paints. They were getting back into the hobby, and... Uh, they're asking about, you know, wondering if some of the paints were still good. And, uh, you know, we just got to talking about how to revive them. And, you know, they just went looking at videos on people how to revive them. And, you know, sometimes you can revive your paint, um, especially as some of the Games Workshop paints, you know, as expensive as they are, you know, you want to take care of them. Um, a few things about, a few little hints that I've learned over the years. Um, you know, I used to store them upside down. That way air didn't have um, as easy of a time getting into it. That was the thought. You know, I don't know if that really works or not. So I'd store them upside down. Um, you know, not only do I get to see what color is there, you know, especially when you got a ton of different paints, you know, having the color at the bottom, you know, you can see, okay, there's, there's the yellow I needed. Um, but my thought was it kept air from seeping in. You know, I don't know if that really worked or not. But um, another thing that a lot of us are guilty of is we'll open up the paint and then we'll sit there and work out of that thing forever. 
all that time, air is, your paints are drying up because it's exposed to the air. Um, one of the things I used to love doing was I'd get a wet palette out. Um, and you can look up videos on wet palettes. Um, basically, it's a um, sponge or something to hold water and then paper and put your paint on top of it and it keeps from drying out like if um, in the next couple of days you're going to be working on your you know, base coat in your army i take a little bit of paint out of the, the bottle i put it on my wet palette I put the lid over it you can let it sit there for a day or two come back and still use your paint it hasn't dried up um, now even if you're not using a wet palette take a little bit out put it on a palette of some sort whether it's a paper plate Close your bottle up. Your paint will last longer. Yeah, you might not use up all the paint that you've got sitting there. I don't recommend putting it back in. Um, I have tried it before. You're trying to save all the paint because it was so expensive. But a lot of times, uh, part will dry, so you'll get dry flakes, and then you're putting that back in there or some other contaminant. Um, and if you think about it, you know, I mean, you're not putting half a bottle out at a time. So take a couple of brushfuls, throw it out there. Um, now, I wouldn't use your best brush to do that. Um, you know, you can use the end of it, put it out there. That way you're not using your $20 brush as a shovel. Um, you know, that will ruin them too. Um, but here's to say you don't use one of your cheap brushes to put that out and then use your good brush um, the thing is you've closed your cap you're not letting air dry it out faster now granted if you keep up on your paints you, know, you can add a little bit of water um, again a lot of them say distilled water um, I've used um, witch hazel or rubbing alcohol um, a lot of times I like the rubbing alcohol because some of it would evaporate if you got a little bit too much in. Um, but this guy that you know, sent me this video about, um, if you want to know what I thought about it, because the guy was putting water into his paints to revive them. And I said, hey, it's great, but you see how he was pouring water directly into the pot? Don't do that. Take your finger, put it in your clean water. Get a few drops, put it in there. That way you're, you don't end up with too much water in your paints. Um, you know, you, you went for it a little too much. Oh, shit. You can't really suck it back out. Um, I guess you could. But, but you know what I'm saying? Where, when I did it with my finger, I get a couple drops. You know, oh, that's not enough. Okay, a couple more. Better to have not enough than too much. Um, Now, I got to looking at some of the videos um, on this. Now, here's another thing. When you're doing research, you know, like these videos, I seen one guy, he was scraping the, the bottle, you know, he was reviving it, and then he was taking it, pushing, you know, a lot of that dried stuff, and putting it down inside, and now you've got lumpy paint. Now, if you're painting off of a, a palette of some sort, whether it be a wet palette or a paper plate or, you know, uh, one of those things with thumb holes, you know, it looks like an egg, that, you know, the, the fancy painters, whatever you're using. If you do get the lumps in there, you know, you can see it and you can get them out of the way. Um, but all because he was trying to push and get every little thing down there. Uh, I, I mean, I know these paints are expensive, but they're not that expensive. Um, I would rather have to go out and buy another bottle than to have lumpy paint. Because it just causes more problems than it's worth. Um, you get in a rush, you put too much on, now you got one of those lumps, you put it on a model, now you're trying to get it off if you catch it. Um, if not, you come back and you see that, you know, you all get in a rush, and, you know, even. Sometimes you might not see that lump and you got it on, now it's on the side of your model, now you're trying to flake it off, or now you're having to strip it, or whatever. Um, but, as the point I was trying to make was, you know, as I was, because he sent me this video, so I looked up a few videos, and, you know, most of them were saying the same things, but there was a few things that I seen, it was like, oh man, that's bad. So don't take everything as gospel. Um, 
you know, I would rather read five articles on the same thing and then pick and choose, you know, because you're going to find a, a general basis, okay, everybody says this, so that must be the truth, but this guy said this, and this guy said that, you know, um, really think about it, um, just because somebody says it on a video doesn't mean that it's good, like that guy's scraping the, 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 the stuff down, he's putting the lumps back into it, to me, the little bit he was going to say wasn't worth the headache, the headache and the hassles that he's going to have, um, so that's, you got to consider that. Okay, nobody else said that. Maybe that's not the wisest thing. Ask some people, you know. Um, what's the saying? The only dumb question is one not asked or something along those lines. Do your research. Ask a couple people, hey, this guy says this, what do you think? You may say what you can learn. Um, and you may hear another idea. Um, you know, it's really funny, um, tattooing is the same way, you, know, you always know I'm a tattoo artist. There's a hundred ways to do the same thing, same thing in painting. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to get to the same end result. Um, so, you know, keep your ears open, don't be so closed-minded. Just because you learned something don't mean there's, there's not another trick out there uh, that could help you. Don't take everyone as gospel, though, either try it. If it doesn't work out, um, now we talked about storing them upside down. Um, another thing that I would do is um, I would find um, shakers to put in it, just like a, um, you know, when you paint in a uh, spray paint, you hear that little bottle, or a little ball inside, and you start rattling. Um, a lot of these paints don't come with it, but I would add like a BB or um, be careful what you add in because I've added, you know, just, oh, it just needs to be metal, so I added some nails to it, and the nail was some sort of cheap metal, and it started rusting, so now my paint has rust color in it, um, which is not a good, not a good thing. Um, stainless steel will not rust like that, um, so I'm not saying go buy, you know, the specific thing that's going to cost you a hundred dollars, but be careful what you put in as a shaker. Um, I used to use um, copper BBs because they wouldn't rust. Um, throw one or two in there. It will help shake it up. Um, you know, those BBs rolling around will get into some of the thicker parts and stir it. Um, you know, one BB versus two BBs. My thought was having more balls in there, moving around would help, you know, sometimes they'd hit. Um, you know, I've heard people say, well, the more you put in there, you know, paint's going to go around it, and, you know, then you're wasting paint. Come on, guys. Um, you know, good to conserve, but let's not go overboard with it. Um, these Rackham paints were famous for drying out. Um, I didn't use them a lot, and oh my god, they would dry out something fierce. But the little skinny ones like this, um, they were so thin, I didn't like them. Um, they're good for layers. Um, but man, you had to do so many layers, and sometimes I'm not going for golden beam quality, I just want to get the shit done. So, you know, just like anything else, right tool for the right job. Um, you'll find some paints you'll like. Maybe this guy loves them. And you think they're shit. You know, keep your, your mind open, but if you try it, you didn't like it, oh well. I know people that would buy these cheapo paints um, and would do stuff. You know, I'm buying the expensive shit, he's doing the cheap shit, and it looks just as good. Um, you know, now, maybe if we had put them side by side, you know, you'd have seen a bigger difference. But, videos or pictures, I didn't see any difference. Um, you know, maybe there is, you know, if you're golden demon standards, maybe you don't want to... To, to use anything but Games Workshop paint. Now, I know this is good paint, um, but 
some of these cheapo brands can do just as good. Now, I didn't use them a lot on my model. There's times where I did. Um, you know, I didn't want to mix up a special color and, you know, man, there's so many of these cheapo brands. They've got so many different, like, shades of blue or shades of green and that would keep me from having to mix, um, you know, custom paint and then having to, this shit goes get expensive, you know, and now you got to buy a, a bottle of white and a bottle of green and a couple, um, you know, empty bottles to mix up your, your shit. And it shit starts getting expensive. Um, where... You know, this stuff is like, I don't know what it is now, but when I was painting, they were like five something a, a jar, where, and it was, you know, this little, you know, this big one is a dollar, you know, a dollar and a quarter, five dollars, you know. Um, now, some brands, I would have to put a little bit of water into it, because it was a little thicker than I liked, um, but I didn't have to mix. Uh, you know, a lot of this is personal preference, um, economics, you know, you don't have a ton of money to buy all the colors in this, you know, I can get four bottles of this cheap shit, or one bottle of good paint, you know, when you're first starting out, I'll buy the cheap shit, um, you know, you can always strip the model if it didn't come out looking good, it's my philosophy, um, Sometimes I found certain colors I didn't like by certain brands. You know, I like this brand better. That's something that you're just going to have to experiment with. But, you know, it's easier to experiment with it when they're a dollar a piece versus five dollars a piece. Um, will you get as good results out of this as this? Well, you know, it's up to you. You're just playing with them and you're not entering them in contests. I'm not saying go buy the cheap shit, but, you know, keep an open mind to it, too. Um, you know, you know, I did do a lot of, use a lot of these for um, terrain more than I did for models, but there was times I painted models with it. Um, especially, you know, custom colors, um, you know, or maybe I'm just doing the knee pads, you know, in this particular color, I'm not doing the whole model. Um, you know, but I'm getting away from, I'm starting to ramble instead of, uh, keeping this on tips. Um, uh, alright guys, um, I'm starting to ramble, so I think it's about time to cut this video short. Um, take the time, um, do a little research, you know, we'll research everything sometimes forget some of the, um, the things that could help us the most. Um, you know, we'll, we'll check out painting articles, how to do these techniques, but we didn't look at an article on how to properly clean a brush, or maybe we did, but we've gotten lazy over the years and developed some bad habits. Um, I don't know. <laughs> here's here's phone tell me to hurry it along so um all right guys um maybe i'll uh, do some more videos like this if you guys like it um all right guys peace